Happy Easter. It is a joy to be together on this great day. The parish news includes a lot of good information about everything upcoming, some of which I'll highlight in a moment. And at the, end, the center are all those uh, names that are remembered or honored that help to decorate the altar with the live flowers and all these things. Thank you so much. The church looks beautiful as usual. And also included is the connection card. The connection card is your ticket to anything you might need from me, from the church office. If you're visiting with us and would like to be added to our mailing list, please fill it out with the appropriate contact information. Then the connection card can be placed in the offering plate later on in our service when the offerings are received. Following this service this morning, over in the parish hall is a breakfast hosted by the men, and uh, Miss Rachel and her crew will be hosting the Easter egg-tastic hunt right out in the courtyard for the children after the service. So stick around for that, grab some breakfast, continue to celebrate this great day. Coming up at the end of September is the annual women's retreat out in uh, Daytona Shores, and uh, there's information in the parish news about that. Uh, many of you enjoy going to that, and we are looking forward to that again this year. Our Stepping Stu Stones Preschool uh, has a lot of great things going on. First, a big thank you for the book fair. Uh, this was the most successful scholastic book fair ever, uh, and many of you were a part of that. Enrollment is open for the fall, so if you have a child or a grandchild and uh, are interested in that, take a look. They are looking also to hire a toddler assistant. And um, in May, they are also doing another one of their parent nights out right before Mother's Day. On May 6th, it's a Friday night. So if you have little ones and you want to have some uh, built-in babysitting, you sign up for that and then go out to dinner or pamper yourself or whatever it may be. That's all through Stepping Stones and that's also in the parish news. Also included in the parish news are uh, updates and information about the summer camps, the music camp, vacation Bible school, and the youth camps. Take a look at that and talk to Miss Rachel or Miss Connie if you have any questions about any of those things. I also want to point out uh, and invite you all to our annual congregational meeting that will take place on Sunday, May 15th, just about a month from now. Not only it is the annual meeting where we elect our officers and we uh, put before you the next fiscal year budget, but it will be a call meeting uh, to turn my call, which is a temporary call, into a permanent call. So we would like as many of you there as possible on Sunday, May 15th. I want to thank everyone who has helped to make this Holy Week the special week that it has been. The music teams, the assistants for our services, the tech teams, and all of you for being here. Some of you coming back after a long period of time where we know what we've been through and how we've been separated. Thank you very much. It has been a great joy and so uplifting this week uh, to be together again with all these gifts. Today is what our lives in Christ are all about, Easter Sunday. So let us take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our processional hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please stand as you're able.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We were buried with Christ by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too we might fall off in of life. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. On the cross, Jesus said, It is finished. And on Easter, our Father in heaven acknowledged the sacrifice complete by raising our Savior from death. Forgiveness is available to all who call out to God in Jesus' name. Let us, therefore, confess our sins. Almighty God, we confess that we have not walked in the newness of life. We have failed to love you with all that we are and have. And we have not always remembered the new life you bestowed on us in the baptism. Lord Jesus, we confess that we have not always sought the things that are above. We have failed to love our neighbors with our thoughts, words, and actions. O oh, Holy Spirit, we have not always relied on your power to amend our sinful lives. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us, for we call out to you in Jesus' name. Christ has paid for all our sins. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. As a called and ordained servant of Christ Jesus, I therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. 
I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. This message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the, ha with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If for, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, 
We are all people <clears throat> most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since, God, since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who, those who belong to Christ. Then come the end, when the hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put his, all his enemies to death under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. invite forward our children. Everyone take one. Uh. Get and grab one of these. Over here. And sit over by Miss Rachel. Oh, now that you see there's some giveaway for free, you came up here. Come get one. What? Are these the ones with the symbols or are they left to the right? You're gonna have to listen. <laughs> All right. 
What do you all have here? Or a baby orange, otherwise known as a mandarin. What shape is it? It's a spear. It's a circle, kind of round like a, like a stone, right? And stones are important today in our gospel reading, right? Because what happened with the stone that was at the tomb that Jesus was buried in? It rolled away to show that Jesus wasn't there anymore. He had risen what today is all about. But there's something else cool. Hold on to them, please. How did you get over there? You were supposed to sit with Miss Rachel. (laughs) There's something else cool about these mandarins, these baby oranges, right? Would you eat them just like this? No, why? Because the outside's kind of hard, doesn't taste so good, right? It's tough. The outside represents us in life sometimes, right? Sometimes the outside of things are kind of rough, right? Sometimes when we look at ourselves on the outside, we can tell we're having a bad day. Sometimes we feel sick and we don't look so good, right? Sometimes when we're angry, we kind of look mean, like that. Sometimes you can look sad, right? And, and sometimes out there we meet people and on the outside they're really rough, right? But the beauty of who we are in Jesus, the beauty of what today is all about, is that Jesus is able to peel away that rough not so good tasting outside and when we get on the inside mm, mm, mm. it's sweet and it's healthy and it's good right that's what it means to be baptized into Christ that's what today is all about yeah there's gonna be some days that it's gonna be tough on the outside when they went to the tomb early Easter morning they thought the rock was gonna be there they thought they weren't gonna get in but when they got there what they saw on the inside was incredible And that's the same with us. You're having a bad day. You feel alone. You meet people that aren't so nice. You're not feeling so good. Remember that on the inside, Jesus is always with you. So next time you have an orange, a mandarin, a banana, and you peel the inside, think about how Jesus is inside you making you sweet. Amen? Amen. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Fold your hands and repeat after me, dear God, thank you for entering into me with your love. Help me to know that you are with me always so I share that love with others. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take your mandarins with you, but don't eat them until your parents say it's okay. You don't want it? All right, good. Well, it's, we're not going to worry about that today. Yeah. Yeah. So on this most holy and blessed day, the day that is the foundation of our faith and our hope, we hear St. Luke's gospel. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. The angels are there to announce that he is risen. But by the time we get to the end of Luke's gospel, there's something interesting and missing, isn't there? We don't really ever encounter the resurrected body of Christ. We know it's happened because later on in Luke, it's addressed and we know it from the other Gospels, but how interesting is it that on this day where we proclaim Christ is risen, we don't get the full Gospel that we meet him with his resurrected body. And it's not unique to Luke's Easter Gospel. Out of the four Gospels that we read on Easter, half of them don't bring us to meet the resurrected body of Christ. 
by the time we say the gospel of our Lord. We hear in Matthew, which we'll hear next year, we'll hear the story. And yes, the women, as they're going away from the empty tomb, they will meet the resurrected Jesus. But Mark's gospel that we heard last Easter has us leaving the tomb. The women leave the tomb. They're afraid and they're amazed. But we don't meet the risen Jesus. Today, from Luke, again, no body, no risen Jesus. And John's gospel that we hear every Easter at the Easter vigil service when we cross over to the morning of the resurrection, we hear John's gospel, and yes, we meet the risen Christ. Mary meets him, but at first mistakes him for the gardener before she recognizes that it is him. Each of these gospel writers are inspired by the Holy Spirit to focus on different characteristics and aspects of the story of Jesus and the audience to whom they are speaking. And it's the collective work of the Holy Spirit in all four Gospels that gives us the assurance that we proclaim today that Christ has indeed risen, that he is alive, and that is the hope of our faith. But sometimes the absence of the body in the stories that we hear And the absence of the body as we live our lives and death comes, sometimes it causes us to be filled with questions. Sometimes it might raise some anxiety and doubt. Sometimes it causes us maybe to struggle in our faith. It wasn't until later on when those apostles and those women actually got to see and meet the risen body of Jesus that those fears were calm. But the absence of the body of Christ that we don't hear until later on, we don't hear on this Easter Sunday, gives us an opportunity to think a little bit about what happens when the body is gone. What happens when death comes? For after all, that's what our hope of Easter is all about. That it gives us some insight and it gives us some answers. And these struggles and these questions that we have aren't really a surprise, are they? Because we know we struggle with sin. And sometimes because we struggle with sin, it also causes us maybe not to see or to appreciate our bodies as the gift that they are from God. I think sometimes because sin and imperfection not only plagues the world, but plagues us personally, we have a bit of a love-hate relationship with our bodies. I mean, we're all about nowadays paying lip service to body positivity, right? Except all of us for who we are. But when it comes down to it, do we really appreciate the miracle and the gift that God has given to us in our bodies, not only for this life, but as we look forward to what we confess when we say we're going to have the resurrection of the body eternally? No. I think sometimes we forget What God teaches us in the scriptures when he says that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we have all this body positivity. We want to be accepted all shapes and all sizes and all the differences that we are. But sometimes that sinful nature, that imperfection causes us to become enslaved and envious of those who have perfect bodies. The bodies that we're bombarded with on social media and in entertainment. I mean, we we talk about accepting ourselves for who we are. But then we still like to use filters on Instagram or airbrush. Or there's still a popularity and obsession with plastic surgery. We have talked for decades now about the importance of physical fitness and working out and exercising and eating right, but obesity is higher than it has ever been throughout history. We talk about our bodies and caring for them, but do we really talk about how they are a gift from God for this life and the next? No, we cry out over and over again, it's my body, I'll do what I want with it. But that often only pertains to the things that aren't healthy for us, that don't cherish the gift that the body is. So we struggle to value ourselves. We struggle to value the gift of our bodies and our life in this world, no less anticipating what's promised to us today, that we have a life 
a resurrection of the body that is yet to come. Well, Easter Sunday is God's reminder to us that even though sin has corrupted our lives, sin permeates and often destroys our bodies, we are still precious in God's sight. That's what our promise and our gift is today. That's why Jesus rose from the grave. It's God's personal message to us that God loves us and God values us and our bodies so much that he was willing to give himself and his own body to rise for us so that would be our gift also. That's what St. Paul meant in our reading from Corinthians today for Easter Sunday when he said, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. When we have those questions about what happens when the body is gone, when life is over, looking at Easter and who Jesus was after Easter till his ascension is that which gives us answers. It's that which gives us hope because Jesus was the first fruits of us. It's our promise. It's our hope. The apostles, before they saw the body again, They were filled with all those questions. They were filled with all those struggles. They were filled with all those uncertainties. But once they met the risen Jesus, everything changed. They believed so much that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life that from that day forward till the day their earthly bodies died, they gave fully of themselves without fear, without question, to spreading that message so that we would have that comfort today. And when we have those questions and those uncertainties, when we're confronted with death and how it takes the body the way we know it from this world, our faith in Christ and looking to Jesus gives us answers. God's people have wrestled with this throughout history from the time of Jesus. But it has been this moment, Easter Sunday, that helps us and gives us answers in our times like that. The theologian Thomas Aquinas, a thousand years ago, talked about that the resurrected body, what we become in Christ, will have three distinct properties. Our resurrected bodies will have identity. We will be who we are in our maleness or our femaleness or whatever it may be, and our our culture and all those things that distinguish us and make us unique. But no longer will those things be tainted by sin and broken. They will be the fulfillment of what God intended them to be. We see it with Jesus after the resurrection. As he meets people, they come to recognize them. He goes and walks through locked doors, yet he still sits with them and eats with them, showing the fullness of his identity as both true God and true man together now victorious over sin and death. And in the life yet to come, our resurrected bodies will have quality. Think about when you, maybe it's now, were at your prime. When you felt the best about yourself, in the best shape, when you took the most selfies, you thought you had it all together. Now imagine that magnified a hundred times, a thousand times, because there's no more sin, there's no more imperfection. That's the quality of the life yet to come, the resurrection of the body. We see that in Jesus. After the resurrection, he is fully glorified. Everything that was foreshadowed before his death and resurrection is now seen by all as he appears to them. And thirdly, the resurrected body in the life yet to come will have integrity. All those things that have destroyed our bodies, all those things that have been lost to sickness and sin will be healed and restored. Every single miracle that Jesus did that we hear about in Scripture, where he restored sight to the blind, where the lepers were healed, where limbs were restored, foreshadowed what was coming in the resurrection. And the apostles themselves saw it in Jesus. In next week's gospel, we'll hear about downing Thomas. And what does he want to see? Jesus' hands and his side. And what does he see? Where the wounds were, the scars are there, everything is healed and restored to the way 
it was supposed to be. Easter and today is God's gift to us to tell us how precious we are, how gifted we are as the people of God. Easter is God's reminder to us to value our lives and our bodies as much as God values and loves us. Every time that we proclaim Christ is risen, alleluia, we are making a confession of what we believe is going to happen to us. That just as Christ rose, we too will rise and live forever. That's what we said together in our psalm at the beginning of the service when we said, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Easter is God's assurance to us that we are somebody. That despite sin and everything that plagues and destroys and mis calculates and redirects all of our thoughts and visions that all those things are overcome in Christ and just as Christ rose from the dead because we are baptized into him we have the assurance that we will have the resurrection of our bodies and live forever amen Please stand as you're able. together confessing our faith with the Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made 
of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic, apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who would suffer in any way, especially all those we name at this time, verbally or silently. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of saints a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith, form, faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witness, witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Please be seated as we now have the opportunity to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
Please rise. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, we also eat the good of God as the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Lord Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his Son to be our Savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. life, Christ the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen. Go in peace, share the good news, hallelujah.